In this lecture about color, we're going to talk about the major color models and then discuss the basic terminologies you need to know about color printing. There are two major color models any designer should be aware of, RGB and CMYK. RGB is about light. RGB is additive color mixing, meaning that as the colors of red, green, and blue mix together, they move towards white, just like the colors of the rainbow. The brightness levels of red, green, and blue can be adjusted in values of 0 to 255. CMYK, on the other hand, is about pigments or inks, and this makes CMYK subtractive color mixing, which means that as you add colors, the addition of the colors cyan, magenta, yellow, and black creates a darker mixture moving towards a richer, darker black. And the mixture of these colors is represented in percentages. For example, this specific shade of blue isn't just one color, but a mixture of 100% cyan and 60% magenta. Same with this yellow, which is a combination of 10% magenta and 100% yellow. So once again, RGB is about light on a screen, and CMYK is about inks on printed paper. Now CMYK has a lower color gamut than RGB. Gamut or color gamut is the range of colors available to a certain color model. For example, if this selection represents the colors available to the human eye, only a portion of that can be represented by the computer monitor. An even smaller amount than that can be printed. Here's a stat I found on the internet which says that RGB is capable of over 16 million color potentials with just a million available to CMYK. The actual numbers aren't really important to us, but the main point is not everything you see on screen can be accurately printed on paper. That's why we have memes such as this, or this, or this, because colors tend to darken when they're printed. So don't be surprised if you print your design and suddenly find that it doesn't match what's on your screen. Screen preferences often differ from computer to computer, and sometimes these computers are not properly calibrated to the output machine. Some high-end commercial printers invest in properly calibrating their computers to their printing machines. And even then, checking proofs and making adjustments to the print output is very common and often necessary. For example, here's a behind-the-scenes look at the printing of this local book. During printing, it's necessary to check the colors of the actual output on paper based on color proofs and adjust the color mixtures as needed to get the best results. A handy way to check if your color is printable is by using the eyedropper tool on Photoshop. In the color dialog box, you'll find that if you select certain colors, especially the bright fluorescent ones, you'll see a warning sign near the color box which means the color is out of gamut and won't print the same way. Clicking it will reveal the nearest color it can represent. Take this image for example. The background is bright and almost neon. If you click it, you'll see an out of gamut warning sign. Here is the actual print. And although the background is okay, it's not nearly as bright as the screen color. Okay, now let's talk about the color terminologies associated with printing with color. Process colors are the colors we use for full color reproduction, and that comes from the overprinting or mixture of CMYK on the surface of the paper. Process colors can be used to print both line copy and half tones. Spot colors are pre-mixed colors based on all the colors of the Pantone matching system. They can also print line copy and half tones. Duotones, from the name itself, uses two colors to print halftones. Let's tackle them in detail. Process color is also called four-color process printing. Using only these four colors, we can reproduce a variety of continuous tone images like photographs, paintings, and illustrations. Each color is printed in one pass, and the overprinting of these colors on the substrate creates the full color image. So an image like this will be broken down into four colors. And as these colors build on the paper, you get the full color image. Because the image is a halftone, 
Each color is printed as a pattern of dots set at specific angles generated by the computer software of the image setter. Specifically, the program is called a RIP or a Raster Image Processor. So as you can see here, these dots combine to create colors we want to print. The inks used in process colors are translucent, even process black. That's why when they're laid on top of each other, these various color combinations are possible. Using Photoshop, you can actually visually see how much of a certain color makes up a specific image. Let's take this image for example. Currently, the image is in RGB. First, let's convert it to CMYK so we can see the layers. Now, you can see the color information visually when you open the Channels dialog box. Just go to Window on the menu bar and click Channels. Here, each color is placed in its own layer. Cyan, magenta, yellow, black. The color information is presented in black and white. The black parts tell the printer how dense the amount of a certain color is. But like I said in the beginning, CMYK has its color limitations. If you want to print a certain color but you only want to use one printing ink because of costs or because of a certain aesthetic, you have to use a spot color. Spot or flat colors use premixed colors unlike CMYK, and these colors are based on the Pantone matching system. Here is footage of actual color mixing happening at the printing press. Spot colors are opaque and are intended to stand alone when printed. You can print line copy in spot color and also halftones, and you can modify the density of the halftone by screening it. One of the advantages of using spot colors is the ability to reproduce colors that CMYK can't produce, such as metallic and neon colors. Spot colors are used when we want amazingly bright colors that exceed process color printing, or to give a project a certain look, or a certain feel. Color is immensely important to the design industry, not only because of aesthetics, but also because of how it communicates. Brands rely on color to create instant recognition and to partly communicate who or what they are. That's why it's important for brands to keep their colors consistent across all materials. Using spot colors can ensure that if your brand uses a very specific and particular color, it'll look the same across all printed materials. And it's standard practice in a lot of brand guidelines to specify the exact color mixtures of their logos for their identity systems. But some spot colors can also be an economic choice for some projects wherein you can only print three or fewer colors and you won't be reproducing full color photographs or artworks. For example, let's say I need to print this specific color. If I were to use process colors, I'd have to use varying amounts of yellow, magenta, and black. That's mixing three colors just to get that one specific color I want. But if I use a spot color, I'll just use one printing ink to do it, which may turn out to be more economical and efficient in the long run. How do we prepare files for spot color printing? In the days before Photoshop or other programs, designers did paste-up work and prepared layouts called mechanicals. These paste-ups acted as instruction guides for the printer. Each color layer was made in black and white and assembled using overlays. Colors were specified by attaching Pantone swatches to the layers. Today, we do these layers digitally, whether in Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. The basic principle of all of this that we're talking about is that each additional printing color belongs in its own layer and printing plate. Let's take this printed image for example. The layer of shiny letters doesn't really use a spot color. It's actually foil stamping, but the same principle for preparing it applies. The image of the owl is a grayscale halftone image printed on special rust-colored Materica paper. If we look at the file, I placed my halftone drawing on one layer and then created an additional layer for the special effect. It's essential that for projects such as this, a designer should be in close coordination with the printer. Here is a poster done in three colors for screen printing. It's not offset, but the process demonstrates the same principle. In order to create the three printing colors which can't be reproduced through the overprinting of CMYK, 
they have to be color separated into three black and white layers that will specify the density of the printing color. So what are the advantages of using spot colors? Well, first there's cost. For shorter print runs and projects that have limited palettes, spot color printing can cost less than full color printing. Second, we can print a whole lot of vibrant colors that we can't print with CMYK. And third, spot colors allow consistency of color among different printed materials. Bear in mind though that any aesthetic reason we may have will always be balanced or held in check by how much it'll cost to print a project. That's just the way it is. The definition of duotone is pretty straightforward. A duotone is a halftone printed in two colors, and they're used to extend the tonal range of a halftone image. You see, when you're printing a grayscale image, it has the tendency to look pale and flat when printed on paper using just one printing ink. Because not all types of blacks are equal. Processed blacks look paler than the black mixed in with other processed colors. But if you're constrained with a budget and you can only print up to two colors, what do you do? We can use duotones. Here, we have a grayscale image. To extend its tone range, you can print it in another color to give it more body and to make it look richer. Same with this. In preparing a duotone, the image must first be converted to grayscale. Under the image menu, click mode, then grayscale. After that, go to the image menu again click Mode, and then Duotone. A Duotone dialog box appears showing two color options. You can assign the Pantone colors you want to use and adjust the percentages of the printing inks. There is, however, something called a fake Duotone, which isn't as bad as it sounds. So here, the image on the left is in grayscale, then right in Duotone. And then, here's the quote-unquote fake duotone. The difference is obvious because instead of printing the entire half tone in two colors, you're just printing it in one color, which in this case is black, and then printing a tint of another color along with it. The basic principle in this lesson is that each color belongs in its own layer or printing plate. So if each color belongs to its own printing plate, how do printers make sure they align properly? Well, we use registration marks. Registration is the method of making sure overlapping images are aligned. It's essential that these color layers align precisely. Because if the colors don't align, we get something called misregistration. Such as this, and this, and this. Misregistration happens because machines are not perfect and a whole set of factors can affect printing, such as the paper and the ink among other things. And because of the speed of the printing press, imperfections are bound to occur. That's why quality checks need to be done. Unless of course you're going for the whole misregistered aesthetic, which is a whole different story. Lastly, what does this mean for you as designers? First, printing your designs have cost implications. Each color you add brings the cost of the design up. You will always have limited budgets. So even if you dream up the most amazing design ideas, they will always have to conform to how much money you or your client can spend. Second, you can customize your designs depending on the process and resources available to you. As they say, constraint breeds creativity. Even with limited resources and limited color, you can create maximum impact if you know your way around the print production process. Lastly, talk to your printer, whether it be digital on-demand or offset printing. Unless you work at a printing press, you're not expected to know every technical detail. But you need to have a working knowledge of how printing works so you can converse with the printer clearly and communicate that with your client. There are seasoned experts who know what they're doing and can offer guidance. As designers, you can develop the vision and if you have a working knowledge of limitations and the possibilities of printing, you can make powerful yet cost-effective designs.